Welcome back to Tier Maker. Today, not only are we making a tier list, we're also making tears in my eyes, because today I decided ranking every uh, FNAF character wasn't enough. I also have to torture myself and rank every Fazbear Fright story, because let's be real, those Fazbear Fright stories are kind of what my channel is known for. Uh, so I think it would be, you know, a great idea to, <laughs> to go through each and every one of them and rank them and share my thoughts, and, you know, in the process, not only will I be incredibly sad, but I'll also probably make many enemies, because there's going to be a lot of people who disagree with me, uh, and I did, like, no thought uh, beforehand for this video. So I'm going in, like, completely just, just what I have ahead of time, and I guess we'll see how it goes, whatever. But, but do feel free to let me know what you think about these stories in the comments, because I'm curious. So, you know what, let's start right away, uh, and, and kick things off with Into the Pit, the very first story we ever got. Um, and honestly, still one of my favorites. I mean, Into the Pit was a very nice blend between spooky stuff and just overall fun, and it had some really interesting lore details and hints as well. Uh, some really interesting stuff, honestly, and I do think Into the Pit, we're, we're, it's starting off strong with, I think, A tier. So, you know, from there, we can only go up, right? <sighs> Alright, next up on our list is To Be Beautiful. Now, To Be Beautiful, uh, it's one that I've I've liked a lot more uh, ever since it was released. At first, I didn't really like it very much because it took forever to get to the action. Um, it took so much time hinting at what was going on, but it never really... It really took a while to actually get to any, uh, any sort of action that was going on. While I do like the story, I think it's around C tier, just because it took forever to actually get to anything, you know, of interest. Oh, here we go. Count the ways. Count the ways is ridiculous. I mean, I've, I've heard people who legitimately say this story is scary to them. It's a story about a guy who's yapping this girl's ears off, like, telling her how, how all the different ways he could kill her. It's not scary, it's just boring. I mean, he goes on and on and on. And when that's not happening, then we flash back to Millie being a grump during school. Just, hey, ooh, my life sucks, I don't like it. And, and, and then we flash back to Funtime Freddy, just yap, 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 yap. It's, it's incredibly boring. It, it, the ending, it's not a bad story, really. It's just, it's just a, 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 an awful one. So we're going to put a D tier. Oh, the Stitch Wraith. Oh, the Stitch Wraith stories. Funny story. When I first got my book, uh, Into the Pit, I, obviously we had no idea what we were going into, uh, when we, when we first started the series. And so, I really did not have any idea what this thing was when I first started reading the Stitch Wraith story. I noticed as soon as I got the book that there were some, some black pages near the back, and I was wondering what that's about. And, and I started reading it, and I couldn't see any connection to FNAF at first. And so I figured, okay, maybe this is like a teaser for a different book? Uh, and, and so I just kind of left it there for now. I read the rest of the book, got back to that, and I still, I was like, okay, maybe this is just a teaser for a different book, but it never said it was. And so I was confused. I kept reading, and then as soon as it mentioned Sarah's name from To Be Beautiful, I knew, okay, this is something special. So, and it, it, it raised a ton of questions, the first one. Didn't answer many, but it left me wanting more. So I think just for that this gets A tier. Uh, oh, Fetch. Fetch, Fetch is also clearly... Well... Hmm. Fetch is a very good story. I am not sure if I'm willing to say it's, like, S tier worthy, because it's not as good as some of the other ones on this list, I don't think, but... Hmm... I, I think, I think it's... I think it's S tier, yeah, yeah. It introduces a cool new character, it gives us some really scary moments, uh, it has an awesome ending, uh, and it's just, it's really good. One thing I like that Fetch does really well is it shows you that there is no way to beat Fetch. Uh, usually when you're reading a story like this, you'll be thinking, okay, well, if I was in this situation, I would do this. In this story, they actually go through a lot of those things. Um, there's a point in the story where they're talking about, okay, what if you give Fetch a task to do that takes him forever? It's an infinite loop. And then he can't, you know, he's stuck doing that forever. Uh, nope, doesn't work. Uh, okay, they think, well, what if you just destroy it? Tries that, doesn't work. 
it, it, it it's very good at showing you, okay, there's no way to beat this thing. And that's what makes it much scarier. So I, I do think it's S tier. Lonely Freddy... I think it's good that it spends a lot of time on character stuff because it makes you feel for the main character a lot more, and that's especially helpful in a story that's much more sad and scary. Um, but I don't think it's... I think it might spend a bit too much time. I think it could easily have been a lot shorter. Uh, it's ve it's definitely a good story, but I don't think it's quite A tier, so we're going to put it in B. Uh, and Out of Stock... Um, Out of Stock is also, I think, A tier, just because of the... <laughs> Plus Trap Chaser is one of the best, creepiest villains in the series, I think. Uh, and the action scenes are great. Uh, so I definitely think it's A tier. Oh, and Stitch Wraith. Stitch Wraith number two. As far as I know, we still don't know what Stitch Wraith number two means. Uh, I think I'm starting to kind of figure out how it connects to other things. And since we're getting Blackbird later this month, I don't know when this video is going live, but at the time I'm recording this, it's the 20th of December. So I, it should be going, uh, it, the book should be out in a few days. I think that that's going to connect to this teaser. Because if you remember, in the end of this teaser, there's a, a wardrobe filled with, like, black scribbles and stuff, which is really strange. Uh, and, and it seems like Jake is mentioned, because it talks about a guy who, who a father who works overseas, and his kid, uh, this woman is taking care of him, and one of them dies. And that sounds very similar to Jake's story, uh, if you've been kind of studying up on these books. So I think... That's really interesting. I don't think it's as good as the first one, though, so we're going to put this also in B tier. All right, 135 AM. This one I've always been a bit conflicted on. I've never really formed a solid opinion on 135 AM. Uh, it's, it's much more... It's a very interesting story. I'll give it that. The way it pictures a woman going insane, uh, that seems to be what it's picturing, uh, and it raises a ton of questions because it's hard to say for sure whether Ella is actually the one causing the problems in this story, it could also very well be uh, just Delilah going insane. I think it would be connected to Ella, but it's hard to tell, and that makes it very interesting. The ending, I think, was a bit abrupt, uh, and that's my only problem with the story. I th at least it's as far as I can tell, uh, as far as I can remember. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a really good story. I I, mm, I feel like I might have been saying it was too good. Now, now everyone's going to expect me to put it in A, but I think I'm still going to put it in B. I don't think it's quite uh, A tier or S tier, so I think I'm going to still, still put it in B, uh, but it is a very good story. Most of these stories are. Room for One More is one that I really like. Uh, I know a lot of people predicted the twist in the end. I never did. I never predicted the twist at the end of the story. Uh, maybe that's embarrassing, I don't know, but I never predicted it. And even so, uh, the ending was, was amazing. I think even if you did predict it, it was... A really weird story with the dream sequences. I think this is definitely A tier. Maybe you'll disagree with me, I don't know. This next one, okay, The New Kid. This is one that you either love or you hate. The New Kid, I love how it features Golden Freddy. We went into it not knowing anything about the story. Uh, he's not, this isn't the story on the cover, so you don't know anything about it. Uh, Golden Freddy isn't hinted at in the back of the book. Uh, you have no idea who's the animatronic in this story until he shows up. At first, I thought it might be Spring Bonnie, because I was really hoping for a Spring Trap story, which, of course, later we got one. Uh, but it ended up being Golden Freddy, which is also fantastic. And even though he didn't actually play a big part in the story, I mean, he, he honestly just sat there for the whole thing. The story is very creepy, and the Springlock failure in the story is brutally depicted. It's great. Um, I honestly wasn't expecting a Springlock failure to happen, even until, like, the few moments before it did. And it shocked me when it did, just because uh, I didn't think, for some reason, I couldn't have expected that they would do that to Kelsey. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad at predicting stories, but I didn't think, I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, this is this is definitely A tier for me. I know a lot of people might disagree, but for me, this is uh, A tier. Uh, oh, Stitch Ray 3. What happened in the Stitch Ray 3? Hold up, let me, give me, give me a second here. Oh, <laughs> alright, that's embarrassing. This is the one where we actually find out the origin of the Uh For some reason, I thought it was a super unmemorable one. No, this is actually a really interesting one. This may be S tier for me. Maybe. I'm not sure. It's pretty creepy. It is pretty creepy. Uh, and it solves a ton of questions, and yet raises some as well. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think this is S tier. I think so. I really like this one. Uh, okay, two more books to go. We've actually been going through this really quickly. 
Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Step closer. Mm -hmm. I was talking. I was talking the other day with my brothers. I don't know anyone else who likes FNAF except for my brothers, and so I'm kind of, you know, uh, I don't have much other opinions to go off of except for any, uh, you know, online friends who like FNAF. And 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 they said they didn't like this one, which I don't understand. I loved this one. I thought it was very well done. I th I, I do understand why you might not like it because. Foxy himself doesn't show up very much, and I know a lot of people might have been really uh, hyped for that. I didn't mind. It was still a very well-written story. I think it kind of dragged out a bit, but I do think it's still good. I think it is A tier, just because of how well it's written. Sure, it's not very FNAF-related, and that might bring it down a bit, but I do think it's still around A or B. We'll put it in A, though. Dance... Oh. There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> okay, Dance With Me. Uh, for Dance With Me, picture 1.35 a.m., but less good and much more bad. Yeah, that's that's kind of Dance With Me. Dance With Me still plays with the kind of the, the idea of going insane and feeling that something's stalking you when no one else can see it, but it just does it in so much more of a bad way. But Laura doesn't play any role as an antagonist. She does nothing. She just kind of sit, sits there spinning for the entire story. If you haven't read the story, one, you must be extremely confused right now, and I don't know why you're watching the video. I don't mind, but I don't know why. She just sits there and spins for the whole story until, like, the very end where she starts, you know, scratching her nails on, on a window. Really scary stuff there. Ballora, you, you could knock over Ballora with a finger. Uh, come on. This doesn't bother me in the slightest. This is the most boring story. I would just read 1.35 a.m. This needs its own tier. Look, in my video where I ranked FNAF characters, I may have been a bit hard on Ballora, and part of that reason is because this story, I thought maybe it would do her justice, okay? I thought maybe this story would do her justice and make me like her as a character a bit more. No, it did not. It... I, it made me care about her less. I don't know why I just added two rows there. I haven't been paying attention. It, it, this ruined any chance of me caring about Ballora whatsoever. What? What? Whatsoever. Coming home though, the one right after, I do think is very good. Again, some people didn't like this. Uh, I think just because it, again, it's not scary, but it it, it has like, some huge reveals for the lore. I do like how it seems like Chica coming to Susie's house every night symbolizes Susie possessing Chica every night. I think that's kind of what they're going for there. And I think that's a really neat metaphor, and it's a very heartfelt story. And I don't. I also like the fact that it takes a while to actually tell us outright that Susie is dead. I like how it gives us some time to kind of figure that out ourselves. And when I did, that was a really cool moment. I really liked the story. Coming Home, I think, is going to be our next S tier. At least for me. Stitch Wraith 4. Okay, this is the one where Andrew and Jake meet. In hindsight, it's a lot more important than I thought it was at first. Uh, there's a lot of vague talk between Andrew and Jake about, um, oh, there was this man, and I hated him, and I wanted him to be in pain and not die. There's a lot of vague stuff. After the man in Room 1280, we now know what a lot of that means. At the time, it was a lot harder to piece together, and so I didn't like it very much. Now I think it moves to B tier. So, oh man, uh, we don't have many actually down here in the lower ranks. Most because I I do like most of these stories, even even the ones down here I like, except for Dance with Me. Uh, last book. Here we go. Uh, let's see if we can get this done before we hit twenty minutes. Bunny call. Bunny call. I do, I, I like Bunny Call. Uh, again, in hindsight, the action maybe wasn't as good as I originally thought it was. Uh, it was pretty tense, and I would love to see a fan game made of that. I still don't think we've gotten one, actually, come to think of it. Have we gotten a fan game with Ralpho yet? Because this story was perfect for that. I'm surprised. We must have, right? I'll have to check after this. Um, but it, it is a really good story, and I think... The twist at the end, while it's kind of obvious, is still really good, uh, and I think it's overall a good story. This goes to B tier, in my opinion. Oh, in the flesh. 
in the flesh. Originally, I really liked this one, actually. I hated the protagonist. I don't know anyone who didn't. Uh, but I think that's... Mm, I don't, I'm not really sure why they wanted to make us hate him so much. But, uh, whatever. And, uh, the ending was great. I think it was great to see Springtrap. And it wasn't like some other stories where he only showed up, like, towards the end. He was here for most... He was here for a good chunk of the story. Uh, and because of that, I did like the story. But, I don't know. It, it feels kind of disjointed. The ending feels a bit random. Uh, and because of that, we're going to put this in C tier along with To Be Beautiful, because I do get a lot of the same vibes from it. Uh, maybe it's by the same author as well, I don't know. Uh, no, no disrespect to the authors, they've done a great job. Uh, just not as good a job as Fetch. Wow. The prime example of a good story. <laughs> okay, The Man in Room 120. The Man in Room 1280 is a very... It's a story that does not work on its own. Along with everything else, it opens up a ton of new possibilities, and it makes, it answers a lot of questions, and raises some as well. Uh, but as its own story, it's not very interesting, at least to me. Uh, and because of that, I think I'm going to have to bring it down as well to Sea Layer. Don't get me wrong, it's very helpful uh, when it comes to helping us solve things. But as its own story, I think each of these stories is able to stand as its own Except this one. This one, when it comes to that, it just it doesn't make sense, especially the ending. Uh, it's a very helpful story, it's a very good story, but when you compare it to the others and use it along with those. Uh, otherwise, just not really. And finally, uh, The Stitch Wraith 5. This one skips between a lot of different perspectives, and I think that is alright. But but it, it doesn't actually answer a whole lot. It does show us that the Stitch Wraith, Andrew and Jake, are collecting all of these different animatronics, which is a really cool thing to see. Uh, it talks about the fire. We go back to Agent Larson for the first time in a while. Uh, and so I, I think it's I think it's I think it's around B tier. Uh, all right, all right. So that's that's kind of our list here. Uh, I'm proud of this. I think I stand by these choices. Sometimes when you're done making the choices, you look back and you're like, oh, maybe I don't actually agree with this. Uh, but no, I think I, I think I still agree with, in hindsight, you know, I still agree with all of these. And I, I, you know, now you know my thoughts. Now you know things to judge me on and say that I'm dumb about, I can't speak. I don't know. Let me know your guys' thoughts because I am really curious. That's why I make videos like this, to share my thoughts and hear yours, uh, as I mentioned, I don't have many IRL friends. Like FNAF, uh, most of them are, I don't know, into whatever it is the kids are playing these days. I don't know, I'm getting old, man. Uh, but yeah, so I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I have nothing else to say.